Good morning, welcome back to another Tall Tales and True. You join me here on the shores of uh, a very chilly Lake Macquarie here in New South Wales in Australia. It was 6 degrees this morning, it's still a chilly 10 degrees Celsius right now. But uh, I'm in the sun and uh, warming up, so like a lizard on a rock. Now this story takes place in about 1992 and my son was about 8 years old and uh, I was a contractor that used to go around New South, all over western New South Wales and Sydney, the central coast, uh, servicing tourist information signs. I'll try and show you a, a couple of pictures. Now this is the sort of um, guide that I'm talking about. They're on, they're either on uh, poles in parks or like this on the side of a post office or a building. In here somewhere. <laughs> if that makes any sense and anyway we'd been out on this trip for about four three or four days traveling all over me and my son he was riding shotgun with me traveling all over new south wales and we we're on our way home and we had one little town to finish it was called a little town called lithgow and uh, we left bathurst early in the morning because i wanted to get to lithgow really early so i could get uh so I could park in the main street because one of the signs that I, had to, that I had to service was in the main street and it was very difficult to get a park during the day so we were there super early and I finished that sign and I realised well, I needed to get some petrol so I'm driving to the, down the main street and I saw a service station and as I pulled into the service station there was a young guy, young Aboriginal guy, standing near the pumps, who obviously worked there. And as I pulled in, my very first thought was, this guy looks shifty, he looks untrustworthy. And I was horrified because I instantly thought that somehow I'd, I'd made a racist judgment, that I'd sort of looked at this guy, saw that he was Aboriginal, and... Um, which for anybody who doesn't live in Australia, that's one of the native peoples that have been here for 80,000 years. Um, yeah, my first thought was that I was being racist. And I was, I was shocked because that just isn't me. But anyway, I've shook myself off, disregarded it, thought, I don't know where that thought came from. We're gonna have to review this later. Anyway, I've jumped out of the car. My son was half dozing in the front seat. And I've filled up with petrol. And I've walked into the, to the office to pay. And he's standing behind, this young guy is standing behind the counter. And uh, he said, oh, that'll be $9.50 or $28 or whatever it was. And I know how much money I had because on these trips I had to pay for it myself up front before I got paid. And I always needed about $500 for accommodation, for fuel, for incidentals. And I had $100 left, two $50 notes left. I know exactly how much money I had. Anyway, I've handed over a $50 note to pay for the petrol. And he's taken it, and then he's walked around back to the side of the counter. He said, oh, hang on, I've just got to go out in the pump to the pump and check and see how much fuel you used. And I told him, I said it was $23.50. He said, oh, mate, I've just got to check. So he's walked back outside, stood outside for a few, couple of, I don't know, 30 seconds, looking at the pump, and then he's walked back in. And he said, that'll be $23.50. And I said, I just gave you a $50 note. He said, no, you didn't. I said, mate, I gave you a $50 note. He just turned out his pockets and made this big sham of, um, sorry about the distraction, this big sham of showing that he didn't have any money. And uh, I said, mate, I've given you the money. I'm not giving you any more money. He said, well, I'm just going to call the police and we'll settle it that way. And I suddenly realised that he had me because I had my young son in the car it was early in the morning, 
here's this guy living in this town, he's probably related to half the people in the town, I'm a total stranger, it's my word against his, if the police come, we're talking a massive drama, you know, and I've got my son to think of, so I knew he had me. So I ended up having to give him the last $50 note to pay for the fuel. And as I drove away, he was standing by the pumps with this big smirk on his face. And I thought, this guy's done this many, many times before. It was too practiced. It was just too smick to, uh, to be a one-off. But the moral of the story was my very first gut feeling that this guy was shifty was absolutely correct and uh, that's probably the last time that I've ignored that gut feeling and and, uh, and overridden it for, for whatever reason because those feelings um, I don't think they're there's nothing sort of uh, strange or supernatural about it I think that once you reach a certain age you have so many life experiences to draw from. You've got your com the computer in your head has got so many faces to to uh, to match. You know, at a billion times a second, you can go through all the people you've ever known, and somehow, for some reason, one person will remind you of somebody that was shifty or did did the wrong thing by you, and it'll connect. So just remember. If you ever get a gut feeling about somebody or something or some situation, listen to your intuition. Listen to that voice. Don't ignore it because I guarantee 99 times out of 100, it will be correct. So that's all I've got for Tall Tales and True this week. But I want to show you, introduce you to three special ladies that uh, uh, I've known for the last three or four years on my channel. One is uh, Kim from Olive City Oasis. She has a gardening channel. She's an amazing lady. She's very, very smart, uh, very, very, very knowledgeable on gardening and most other things for that matter. Great sense of humor. And uh, as with the other two that I'm gonna introduce you to, very generous of spirit. This is Kim at Olive City Oasis. The second one I want to introduce you to is Sharon H. She is a riot. This lady, she's very, um, also very, very smart. And her channel is, I don't, know, I don't know how you describe it. I urge you just to go and check it out because some of the, some of the things that she comes out with are very profound. And I've, quite a few times I've had to, I've had, after I've, instead of commenting straight away like I normally do, I've had to actually sit back and think about what she's, what video is about and how I think, how I feel about it before I answer. And uh, so yeah, she's a very special lady. And this is Sharon H. We all need our side of the story to be heard without judgment or bias. And the words no judgment here when coming from a place of good can open up a safe place for recovery, peace and closure. And the, the last one is Berena. She is in Africa and her channel is called Berena's Adventures. She is um, very, very special, very really dry sense of humour. We've had some really good laughs over the years. This is Berena's Nature Stories. support each other on our channels and uh, at the end of this video I'm going to put some clips just for Berena. This is the view from where I was sitting. I'll just take you down to the lake. Oh.
Oh, that sun's beautiful. It's a bit of a jetty there. I might even take you out there, Berena. We'll go for a look on the jetty. I think there's a couple of people fishing out there. It's actually the first morning where the wind hasn't been howling. The swell is still huge on the beach, but uh, I'm sort of out of action at the moment with this leg, but... Alright, Baron, we're going for a bit of a drive. for a quick walk up the creek just to see what the uh, state of play with the new bridge is and how long it's going to be before we can go fishing up here again people have crit criticized the design of this bridge but i think it looks quite good i'm quite uh... there's the creek that we fish in i'm very tempted to clamber onto this platform and go for a look Managed to scramble across. Let's go and check this out. Until we get kicked out anyway. And that's as far as it goes for now. Looks like it's going to just be a pathway after that. Hmm. Interesting. There's the lagoon over the back there. Feels so hot, sounds so alone. There's no place I want to go. This lazy love means so much to me. Drink champagne, smoke cigars You're first too drunk to drive my car I'm married to this lazy life Watch the children in the park And have my breakfast after dark This lazy life means so much to me See the sunlight on your thighs And leave the sleep there in my eyes Even married to a lazy Taking Lucy for a walk, it's blowing a gale, it's threatening to rain, it's only 13 degrees. I'm cold already. How far we'll get, we'll see.
And that's it, Barina. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little glimpse of uh, life around Lake Macquarie in Newcastle. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody and uh, catch you on the next one. And there we have it. First 10,000 steps with the leg brace on. And there's Lucy uh, finishing off the last of my wheat bix. She loves it.